Slayers, and welcome to another episode of She Slays the Day. I am your host, Dr. Lauren Brunslick, and I have a co-host today with me, the one and only Mr. Kirby Brunslick. That's right. Not Dr. That's Kirby Brunslick. Not Dr. is Mr. I actually Mr. asked people to address me as not Dr. Kirby. <laughs> you would. Such a nine thing. Um... Enneagram 9 for those who are listening for the first time. I'm sure that will not be the first time we reference the Enneagram today. Since today we are talking about our support roles, mm -hmm. working Cairo e non Cairo. You know what? I think Andy Sandberg's production company is called Not a Doctor. Really? Mm -hmm. At the, like the end of episodes of like Brooklyn Nine-Nine, there'd be like a couple of the you know production things, and then the, his voice like, Not a Doctor. <laughs> That's Maybe it's Nick Rolls. Um... No, so this came because um, I made you stand for a real last week. For a real long time. Okay, listen. <laughs> if you think really... I have any shame about how... Okay, I am a little embarrassed at how terrible my memory is. That was the funny part. Is you could not remember <laughs> the order. Like, it's go... four lines. It's four lines. That happens at the clinic, too. Like, they'll be... Like, they don't... Morgan doesn't even ask me to do lots of talking because she just doesn't have the patience for how many times it takes me to be like, oh, that's what comes next. That's right. You should just talk extemporaneously instead of like any kind of scripted thing. I know reels you have to because you have to like hit the... What is extemporaneously mean? Off the dome. Like... Okay. Do you know what trending audio means? Like what? I know. I'm. That's what oh, I was Oh, please. Saying. Oh, what? Mr. Kirby Brunson? Like, please tell me about how to do reels. <laughs> you uh, but anyways it was um about you know being the female doctor in or like you know in the business and then the husband being the support and y'all liked it because you're a bunch of women who have probably gone through a lot of the same stuff mm -hmm. to me it's always funny because the number one thing that happens is like well we just met that guy the other day who owns the wedding barn mm -hmm. and like uh, our friend introduced, like, this is Lauren and Kirby. They, like, Lauren's a chiropractor at Blue Hills Chiropractic, and they run it or something like that. And he just, like, immediately turned to you and was like, so you're a chiropractor too? No, here's what it is, and here's where it gets complicated where I don't want to necessarily assume sexism. Is I will always assume sexism. We say we own Blue Hills Chiropractic. Yeah. Which we do. Mm-hmm. But then, and you, you know, when we say like, and she's, she's a chiropractor and then they go, so you are too, like, so I think there's some confusion there that's maybe not, but there is definitely, you can tell the guy who's like, oh, you guys own, and then like, think that I'm the chiropractor. Yeah. They like, just want to like, talk to you. But, but yeah, but that is frustrating because I have a lot in it. I mean, I don't want to put the cart before the horse. You like that? You got one. The correct way to say something. Um, because I'm sure we'll talk about it. But like I have we have people who co-own a vet clinic. And, you know, they don't say we own yada yada yada. It's kind of like Yeah, they don't work in the vet clinic though. Neither do you, Yeah. Yeah, and also uh, I suppose. I suppose, okay. But technically she gets half of it. Yeah. Oh, God. Yeah. No, I'm not. No, I suppose. All right. All right. So before that's anyway, that's how it was. Um, this idea started and then we threw something up and we got some questions from you guys to answer. So we're going to try and not take forever to answer each question I'm and not go on forever. too many tangents. Oh, so many. Tangents. Because we've got. Don't tell me not to tangent. <laughs> so you're going to intentionally tangent. I'm just going to be off on random tangents on no. Well, I think that's the thing about. No, tan don't tangent. <laughs> <laughs> you dare? I saw what you were doing. Okay, let's do a listener highlight. All right, uh, this one is from Jess Ky Kyrio. I think it's supposed to maybe be, it's C H I R I O. I always love when I might have read this one before. Jess I, feel like I, I don't know. I feel like I've had this talk about Jishiro. Anyway, uh, it's titled Rockstar. It's five stars. It'd be weird if it was less. Dr. Lauren is a rock star. She is down to earth and will tell it to you like it is. I'm a recent graduate of Sherman College, double exclamation mark. Congratulations. I have enjoyed and shared many of Dr. Lauren's podcasts over the past year. Look forward to being a rock star chiropractor just like her. Triple exclamation mark. You know, that's a new one, but I swear I've read it. I don't know. 
Yeah, I mean, we should really get more organized about. But I mean, now we're like a hundred and some episodes in. Like, where do you even start? Of like, what have I read before? Just what any, is God? Do, do any of the <laughs> listeners want to put together a oh, she slays a <laughs> day wiki work? where it says what was the intro? <laughs> There's been so many different, I was looking back, there's been so many different iterations and ways, like we started with different ways of naming them that has completely changed. Yep. Looking at some of the episodes and remembering like some have ads in the middle of them, mm-hmm. some don't like. Oh yeah, I just had a company this week ask like, um, I actually had two companies this week. I don't, something must have happened. I must have gone somewhere. She says like must have gotten promoted somewhere because I had two pretty big names reach out asking me to be on their podcast this week mm. and a couple businesses. And I'm like, what's going on? Maybe the, the stuff for speaking at the women's conference down in Florida. Maybe. And then they listen to the podcast and they're like, this chick is going to get on stage and give an eloquent speech. <laughs> By the way. Can oh. you swear at your speech, Tony? I don't know how they'll stop me. I thought you were going to say, I don't fucking care. <laughs> I, I mean, what do they get? I'm not yeah, gonna, I once never it comes out of your mouth, they're not going to rush swear. the stage. But sometimes I just get really excited. And you the only way to communicate that excitement is a little curse word. Okay, so just, okay, what I'll do, since I am pretty sure I read this, I don't know. Because I got stumbled on the Cairo spelt the, mm. the same way too. Where I, um, was earlier this week on Wednesday, Rosemary Batansky, doctor, okay. Rosemary, uh, the president of the Women Chiropractor Association, she gave us a verbal uh, listener highlight by saying that she saves episodes to like binge listen on vacation. And That's she awesome. will just be sitting on the beach like with headphones in and like be laughing out loud. And she's like, I save them. And I get so excited when I know I have multiple to listen to. Well, that's great. Well, that's uh... so she is some point in the future listening to this moment now. Well, on vacation. So enjoy your vacation. It's probably the women chiropractor. Oh, yeah, because yeah, she's on vacation while she's doing yeah. that. Grab another drink and uh, just enjoy yourself. Yeah. Um, okay. Let's pray. Pray. And then start answering questions. Cool. Do you want me to do it? I do. Dear God, thank you for bringing us together again to have these interesting and important conversations. Um, help our experience to hopefully... Um, give a path or at least enlighten uh, couples going through similar situations, help them as they go on a very difficult but very rewarding journey, Um, help the people listening and us uh, keep you and our marriages at the center of our lives and not lose focus Um, and help us just see people around us who need us and run towards them. In your name we pray. Amen. 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 Um, Okay. Funny, just mini story, is our family. Sorry, no tangents. <laughs> okay, also you got really quiet there. I guarantee you, like people either had to decide, like, do I care if I, what I can hear he said, or they just turned you up. But oh, well, um, I was praying. Yeah, I can cut that section and. Well, are you gonna have to cut this there. section about you talking about cutting sections? No. Nope. Can we please stay on track? Did I go on a tangent? So, <laughs> our family cycles through three different <laughs> prayers. Uh, for dinner mm-hmm. each night. Each one kind of has their own bit. Yes. I um, love it. <laughs> I love it. So we have this one, God is great, God is good, and we thank him for this food. Amen. And there's like this um, like overhead, like how would you describe that visibly for people? It's like if you took the, prayer the classic prayer hands and then just brought them up over the top of your head, and then as you're saying it, <laughs> pump your hands up and down above your head. <laughs> And for some reason, we got into, we have to say it as fast as, as possible. Fast as possible. And then you clap really loud when you say like amen. Like a big alligator. <laughs> yeah. Um, so that's the bit for that one. <laughs> then we... Do a normal one. We sing, oh, the we, Lord is good to me. And so we thank the Lord for giving me the things we need, the sun and the rain and the apple tree. Tree, tree is what we there decided There was a about. big conversation about whether it was apple seed or apple tree for a long time. Oh, the Lord is good to me. And then you saying amen over, over and over. Instead of saying amen, 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 we all do our own different thing. No, we go amen, 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 amen. Oh, and then we go into like all sorts of weird it usually ends up with a, It's either oh, a howl man. or a ululation. Oh, no, we do say oh, man. We go, oh, man. man. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. And then we have a normal one. 
Yep. But then we add a, it's like the Catholic grace prayer, yeah. but then we also add, and we also pray for peace in the world. That's so. clearly working. We should just make sure. <laughs> totally. <laughs> should keep doing that one. So, all right. Anyways. On to. On to our very first question. Um, is it possible for this, meaning Cairo e non Cairo, uh, to be the only source of income for the household? Question mark. And then she goes, comfortably? Question mark. No. Next question. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, so I think hmm. we cover a little bit of this in what was the episode we did about tra- me? 27. Transi- 27. Uh, about me transitioning from corporate work to being full-time in the clinic. Yeah, that was a much more detailed episode about, like, calculating financial risk. Mm -hmm. But to summarize, I guess, we didn't just jump in and go like, oh, Lauren's a doctor now. Let's both start a clinic and her be a chiropractor and me not be a chiropractor and let's start a business. Like, we had, we were fortunate enough that I had a good-paying corporate job um, and... We didn't move me fully into the practice until the practice was making enough and I was involved enough in the practice Mm -hmm. where it was like, it's silly for me to keep taking side consulting gigs that take away from my time with the practice that, you know, still pay decent, but interrupt our lives. Yeah, they did pay really good. (laughs) But... But um, you did a much better job answering that because I was just going to laugh and go like, bitch, you're not following me on Instagram? <laughs> like, I live in that life. Yeah, but, but absolutely. Yeah, th- that's the thing. Now we're, now we're, I mean, and at that point we were already comfortable. But if you listen to any of our financial episodes, we live pretty well within our means and we aggressively pay off debt mm-hmm. and we're saving. Like, mm-hmm. So we're definitely making enough money to be comfortable with our whole family income coming from a single business. Yes, Okay. Did we do good? Next? I th- the answer is yes. Yeah, but, it, but you got to do more calculated. Be, there needs to be a little advice in there, though, too. Of So <laughs> you need to. I you just gave it. Advice. You need to think about what does your family need? What's your version of comfort? And looking at that, actually putting it down on paper and then reverse engineering to go, how many people would we need to see? It also involves understanding your business because it's not revenue. It's always profit. Mm-hmm. Like if you go, our family needs a hundred thousand dollars a year to pay off our debts, to pay for our house, to go on our trips, to live comfortably. Okay. So you need a hundred thousand in profit. What are your margins? How many, what would that mean for revenue? And then how many people would you need to see? Can you pull that off? Like work backwards and figure out like if Mm -hmm. what you need because you have a ton of debt and you live in Manhattan and you need $400,000 a year to be comfortable, Mm -hmm. you're going to have to build a pretty killer practice fast. Yeah. And I mean, I think a lot of this question will get answered continually through because it's like, well, what do you mean by comfortable? Because do you plan on having children? Mm -hmm. So your idea of how much it costs for the family is different. But also now you start having equations of like what, there's not just financial comfort. There's, well, if mom is working, you mm-hmm. know, if I'm gone before our kids wake up two days a week, mm-hmm. I hate that. It's a temporary thing right now. Um, but, you know, if Kirby was also gone and were or like missed dinner three nights a week because of his work, like that wouldn't be comfortable yep. even if we were making money, a lot more money. So it is like financially comfort, yes, is an equation and it might not be something right away. If you're starting a practice and your spouse has a job, it might be really nice to keep them in that position for a while so you're not like desperate just for any money and you were building a practice you actually care about. Yeah. Um, um, were you going to go on to the next one? I have one no. more thing. on. Um, the other thing is looking at what your business is spending and what it needs and what your skill sets are. So Mm -hmm. a big part of me transitioning over and what might be for other people is depending on what your skill set is, you may be paying someone else a lot of money that you could keep in house. So we could be paying a website company $1,500 a month to do our website. And we could be paying a video production company a thousand dollars a finished minute to do all of our ads. Mm -hmm. We could be being a social, like a Facebook ads person. We could be paying Extra for accounting, we could be extra. So yeah, so we'll get to that a little yep. more okay. when we get into our roles. Okay. 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 So in the beginning, did it put a strain on your marriage? 
Um, I don't. Okay, so what? I think we'll talk more about like just. We should have prefaced that like working together puts a strain on our marriage to this date. Yeah. I think working also, separately put would a, put a strain on our marriage. Um, so like Kirby and I, we're not going to lie to you. Like we disagree and bicker. Our marriage is in a good spot. So it's not like unsafe, but it's like, oh, yeah. we have not like figured this out. Um, no, no. I And I think that's a good point of not working together also. So when you think about it, and, and personally, we can talk about our case, a big part of why I went full, full into the business and haven't been taking side consulting things was I was mostly in the business, but still feeling out for projects. And then I would get a project that would take up anywhere between 15 and 40 hours a week for anywhere from three weeks to six weeks. And in those weeks, it was great because there was more money, but we weren't happy as a family because I would still have to get all the stuff I was supposed to do for the clinic. I was still supposed to be taking care of the kids as much as I could. And then that meant a lot of times I'd have to do work at night mm -hmm. and that mentally took a toll that on you, much bigger, you know, yeah. and me because you, that was our time to connect mm -hmm. and our time to talk about the business and have fun ideas. But I was going like, okay, I did this for Blue House Cairo. I got the kids. Now I have to go do this for my work and mm -hmm. know like, you know, I was just working and not being a person really. Yeah. Um, I would say a strain that we had to work on in the beginning and we being more me was the whole, it's our business. Mm -hmm. That's I, I think there's still, since you're doing most of the work, it's a natural connection. People put in their head of like, these hands go away. There's no money. Yep. Yep. Um, but yeah, it it's definitely figuring out like that on the component of like, no, 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 it is ours. Even though you're the chiropractor and you're not, but like, this is, we're doing this together. You, even if you didn't, um, this is kind of what I was bringing up with the vet thing where it's like, even if you weren't in clinic, like I get to work on, I get to be at work as much as I am. I get to focus on building that building because you are willing to be there for our children. Mm -hmm. Now, if there was no kids, maybe that would be a little, le little more blurry of like, is it ours? Like, bleh, bleh, bleh. yeah. Know. If if I was off like playing frisbee golf while you were working all day, it might I mean, be a little. You don't want to bring I, up golfing. I've never played frisbee golf. Yeah, that is that why I said frisbee golf uh -huh. instead of golf. Uh huh. Kirby's never been had a day where golfing was a majority. Anyways, um. So yes, in the beginning. It, it consistently does. It evolves like sometime, you know, 11 years in, I feel like there are still some things that are getting worked out. And, but like, you know, it's, it's marriage. It's kind of like, how'd you figure out how to like raise the kids when they were first born? It's like, oh, well, we had that fight then when they were infants. Mm -hmm. And now we have different fights now that they're six and nine. And they're kind of all circling around the same thing where I'm a stricter parent and you're not like, you know, like, yeah. um, so it's like, well, we still have similar fights and it's not that we haven't grown. It's just the problems change. And, and I think you'll find if you're, this is the hardest thing when you're in it, but you find if you're having consistent fights about an issue, that that's a thing that both of you probably need to work on and make some changes or change some attitudes. Mm -hmm. So like we still, we still have issues, especially when you're in high stress where I understand it of, I can't, there are certain things I can't take the burden off. And, you know, right now we're a little understaffed. We're working on that, but you have to adjust a lot of people by yourself right now. Mm -hmm. And I know that puts a burden on you. And I try to support that by doing whatever I can within my capacity at the business and, you know, taking care of the house and taking care of the kids, but that still bubbles over. Mm -hmm. And so we are physically doing the things to change that, but that's going to happen in a little while. Yeah. But for now, it's still, it's still a point of contention. It's still fights. It's still, you know, bad energy that, that we got to keep handling in the meantime. Yeah. But it's one of those things where you help figure out, like, okay, we can afford, you know, if you were a spouse that was like, 
ah, extra docs are a lot of money. I don't know if we can afford that. You know, that would yeah. be, that would be different. Okay. What role do each of you play for the business side of the practice? I am the visionary. I am, I know you don't like it, but like I am. Um, I am the like. I'd fine, fine with you being the visionary. Well, I, f- I felt like you were like, I come up with ideas too. Oh, gosh. No. Oh. no, I mean, I know I do, but. I am the one that, like, I am the CEO that is, you know, on the front line with the team, needing to keep um, morale up, able to see because I'm like there all the time, mm-hmm. see issues and bring them home to Kirby to discuss. Um, and obviously the adjuster. Yeah. All those things. Mm-hmm. Um, I am more the executioner. I like yep. to say. Uh, when the ideas come up um, or the big plans between, usually between myself and Morgan, uh, we kind of divvy up how we're going to actually get things done. Morgan executes a lot more of the in-clinic uh, communicating with the staff stuff. I do more of anything big or technical um, outside or anything creative. Um, so I build and manage and change the website, uh, do all the Facebook ads, shoot all the video and photos, edit those, uh, handle a lot of the QuickBooks stuff in the background, any finance issues. So, you know, we built a couple buildings and purchased a couple uh, pieces of land. So I deal with all the banking. Um, yeah, like all of the grant stuff from COVID, all of the like, um, you also more recently really stepped in more as an HR role. Yep. Too, yeah. So which I'll communicate has been with lovely. Yeah. I'll communicate with, with staff, um, about any issues and a lot of the, the payroll stuff. I don't actually do the payroll, but if there's any changes or, or onboarding someone, um, just the fixer. Yeah. The actual physical fixer of things too. And then also I'm the landscape or the lawn boy. <laughs> So also I, our lawn boy. It's really funny because if you haven't seen my IGTV of like how our clinic is set up, we have these giant window or door like glass doors that open onto a deck right by our adjusting area. And all summer long, just oh, I'm adjusting people, and there goes my husband on his little riding lawnmower. And I'm like, yep, yep, totally sure that a 16 year old boy would. Probably be a better um, use of financial time. But if you can I- find one that we can pay, not too much to do that. I will gladly give up that. But the big thing is, is I don't like the big lawn companies that charge a ton. And it's yeah. like, we already own yeah. a lawnmower. Like, I can do that in 20 minutes. So, yeah. So, Kirby works from home. He... Did you even bring up the kids stuff? No, that was, I was just going like, to say, like, like, a big also, part Also, Kirby is not full-time Blue Hills Cairo. Yeah. Like, it is... You say you're like 80, 80 percent. Yeah. Yeah. I'd say 75 to 80. And then it's, you know, the the girls get off the bus around three thirty and I'm always here for them. I usually take them to school most days. Uh, I take off early to take them to piano on Tuesdays. Mm-hmm. But you are there the for the team meeting. Yep. I'm, I'm at the team meeting. So I'm involved. But then I you do marketing meetings with a marketing person. Yep. Yeah. You do all the, like you said, the tech stuff. But like, I don't even go to I once a year. I sometimes have to show up for a signature. It's really funny because it's the only time I see my accountant because she gets adjusted at our other clinic. And I'm just like, hey, how are you? What Like, what am I saying? It doesn't matter. It doesn't it matter. It doesn't matter. Hopefully you're not 11 year catfishing me. <laughs> can show you every document ever. Um, you don't know how to read them, but... I don't. I would turn to you and I'd be like, is my husband catfishing me? He... <laughs> okay. Um, next question. Are there ever any arguments because he isn't a Cairo? Um, and it says like philosophy, etc. So first of all, I will say our, our biggest argument is because you can't adjust. And I'm a three wing four... And oh my gosh, I wing for hard. Just like, you don't understand how stressful it is adjusting all these people. You have have literally said there is no way you could even comprehend. Do you know how to have 190 second conversations? I don't. With people, like, I've not it's trained very on difficult. it. I would not like it. It's, it's the worst. I, yeah, I know. Do you know how to build a spreadsheet? <laughs> no, 
but I wouldn't have to talk to people. Um, so I would say that is our number one Cairo e non Cairo. Um, F- philosophically, I would say you've taught me so much, and I go. I like to find congruent philosophies. Mm-hmm. So, like that's been a lot of my religious journey. Is like you, you, you drink the Cairo juice. Yeah, because it like, makes sense to me. Like you, I have to actually temper you back from getting adjusted. Yeah, like Kirby would get adjusted three times a week if I let him. Um, and so, if you were like flippant about chiropractic care mm. and I was like hey you haven't been adjusted in like three weeks like do you want to be adjusted and if you were like mm, my back doesn't hurt I think I would like rage yeah. um so that is really really helpful that like when so episode 64 is where we talk much more in depth about this raising holistic kids is mm-hmm. it a deal breaker um and, which is really funny. Do you remember the question to that one? It, they were like engaged or something. They were about to be engaged. Was it about and vaccinating kids? I don't know about? what it was about. It was something where she was just like, almost like, am I crazy? That he, like she was worried about something that he didn't even say. Oh, yeah. Was so like, funny she was worried she that came, he was going to be yeah. thinking this way. And- yes. She came back after that episode and was just laughing, being like, okay, yep, you're right. You talked me down. I might have been going a little. But it was still great um, conversation around um, it would be very difficult if you, if I had to, if we disagreed on vaccinations, if we disagreed on antibiotics, Mm -hmm. if, you know, I mean, there are times where you'll just show up with the girls after school, Mm -hmm. like a couple weeks ago. Ty might have a broken finger. Like, and you trusted me, your very human wife, to assess whether our child's finger was broken and whether you should go in. Like, if you would have gone straight to urgent care, I'd have been like... That would have been um, really weird. <laughs> would have been weird. Would've well, been and, weird. and I think beyond... So there's the there's the arguments that could happen between Cairo and non-Cairo are, um, you know, obviously lifestyle and children. And then I think, like, business style... And what we're going for there, too. And I think that comes back to a like things to holistically fit a philosophy. So when we've had to do some big investments in technology, say, um, Mm -hmm. or building a new building, I since I'm in on the philosophical purpose of our business and who we serve, because we've had those hard conversations, because we've done the, the work on knowing what our vision and mission and everything for this whole organization is when it does come to, we need to spend you know, 15 grand on scanning equipment. And I go, will it give the patients a better experience? Will you be a better doctor with it? And if, and if we can communicate and I go like, here is how this will change the experience for our patients and will allow them to get better results in our clinic to be able to serve better. Yeah. It is kind of, you're like, okay, Let's do it, you know, like, yeah, because I know if we have the right stuff in place that fits our philosophy, then we're going to have better retention numbers. We're going to have an easier time converting new patients. So it will pay for itself. Yeah. Now, if it was huge, huge, like we got to always run the numbers, but then it's just a question, you know, like then and then we can have that conversation of, okay, if this equipment costs a ton, will we get better retention or more patients because of it? And if you go, I don't know then right. we have our answer. Yep. Um, okay. What's your husband's support roles look like for your relationship, family, home? I think we answered that. Yeah, we did. Yeah, I mean, sure. <laughs> well, there's more questions that are a little more... Well, okay. Yeah. I was going to say, like, on the emotional level. Yeah, I think no. we've really... So, next question is, how do you lift each other up in your respective roles? Dirty dancing style, like hold you above my head <laughs> that is virtually impossible to do we tried in that pool in we tried drinks. we have lots of video footage of trying in that pool i don't think people understand how difficult that is and how rigid the person on top needs to hold their you body <laughs> okay i was like a board though and then i just like would plop over like a board <laughs> <laughs> Tells us that Patrick Swayze was just jacked. In it that also movie helped. Too. I'm pretty sure they hadn't had four margaritas. <laughs> <laughs> now we're gonna have to find that video footage and share it mm-hmm. because um, 
Um, but so, okay, how do I support you? Why don't you go first on this one? <laughs> you, you. I'm going to need a second to think. So um, I think in, it's easy for people to kind of go in stereotypes. So like I'm a bit of the 50s housewife type of thing where like I know you're going to come home super stressed or like especially now because we are seeing so many people and we're a little short staffed I know that you are on I'd say half the days come home just either beaten down or just had a frustrating day or just physically exhausted physically so I try to create the environment that I know is going to not add any more stress and hopefully be relaxing so I usually do have dinner ready by that time because the girls are ready to eat you get home between 5 30 and 6 um usually like to have the house tidy because i know that's really upsetting for you it really is i could clean that eight o'clock i could clean that four o'clock either way is fine with me but i know that's stressful for you i try to give you space um right away when you get home uh when you're there's a weird vacillation that you do of (laughs) I'll ask you how your day was, and you'll go, I do not want to talk about it. And then about 10 minutes later, 15 minutes later. I really do later, love my job, you guys. <laughs> like, I, we have an amazing practice. Oh, yeah. It's just. Well, it's just in that moment. Yeah. Like, you know, we'll we'll then be grateful and, and talk about it later in the evening. But so 10 minutes after you say, I do not want to talk about it, you'll come out and start telling me about it. Like a half story. A half story. And then I'll ask like a single question. I'll be like, I don't I understand. I don't want to talk about it. And then you go, I don't want to talk about it. So I'm patient with that. That's how I lift you up. Yep. Um, and, and yeah, I think. You, um, you allow me as the visionary you used to kind of immediately start like poking holes mm-hmm. in things as like kind of the data person used to just kind of immediately be like, uh, I don't know if that'll work because, mm-hmm. and that would just like be, a, so you've really changed your perspective um, to kind of ask more prodding questions of like, do you think that would help this or, you know, I would say the other thing is in learning you and learning your process, I think I've learned to listen, and even if I have concerns about an idea, um, let you get it all out, let you vent, and just be heard. And if you're really upset or if you have a really out there idea, let you just stew on it for a while, and then usually you find your way back to (laughs) Yeah, there's been some funny ideas that are like, yeah, you're right, that was a... And the thing is, I don't have to even bring up any objections Uh, it's not i'm right and you're wrong or i told you so it's because i just go that's really interesting Mm -hmm. you know like we'll have to take some time to look into that and then a day or two later it goes away or you go like "Eh, that's not gonna work right so just being patient with that because yeah i would understand if you're if you're excited in the moment it's really frustrating to be shot down so i still don't have anything what would who would, I mean I have lots of ideas but what how do you think I support you part of the way that we've set up our life and our different personality styles is that all the support goes to me is that we have a lifestyle where I have space to do a lot of work myself so I start every morning with reading and journaling and meditating and I get to work out during the day yeah like so much of that is like how much less support would you need if you could have a more flexible schedule? Yeah. Like 100%. If, if yeah, you, I didn't need to work out at five 30 in the morning or quick on my lunch break and then don't shower and just spray yourself with. Yeah. Like if, if you had, if you had 10 hours, 20 hours less of work a week and then you would be cleaning the house more and making some of the meals and working out and we'd be doing a lot of stuff together. Mm-hmm. So So, no, I I think in this time. um... It really does, I mean, come down to such an individualized thing of, like, personalities, though, too. Mm -hmm. You know, of, like, we were just talking about this yesterday, um, where it was, like, you know, my personality doesn't want to be told, like, Mm -hmm. hey, you you should try and find more time to meditate. It should be, like... Get your game face on. You got this. You're doing amazing. You know, like, and um, 
I do think that in general, I don't make dis- big decisions without talking to you mm-hmm. first. Like a lot of things get run by you. The amount of trust that has been built, um, knowing like, okay, you're not a chiropractor, you're not there, but like I do leave a lot of space for like your opinion mm-hmm. on things and heavily weighted. Yeah, and I would say that that's grown over time too. So yeah. that's it's just time and communicating. Mm-hmm. It's talking. It's like I think that's what on the biggest takeaway from this entire thing. All the questions is going to be: we ultimately trust each other, we ultimately respect each other. We offer a lot of grace. Some of us offer others more than others, but it's you to me. Um, and we talk constantly. Talk. And a lot of drinking. Yep, that helps. <laughs> um, okay, the next question is what's your, everyone wants to know like kind of what your support, support role is. Um, Tony wants to know um why don't you have your own podcast? God, I don't even know what I would talk about. Well, I mean, I, it, I have a lot of things I'm interested in, but I think if I talked about all the things that I'm interested in, I would be on a government watch list. Or... Um, it'd be like Kirby read a book this week. That would be the name of your podcast. Oh, yeah. And it would just be, but to bring it back to me and our business, do you know how mad I would be? If you didn't get like a Facebook ad running or like, oh, yeah, but my podcast was done or I had to finish my book for your podcast. Oh, yeah. It would just be like. (laughs) So basically how we've set it up is that all of my priorities are the number one. That's sad. This is a good therapy session. Damn it. We're the worst. Um, Okay. Uh, we're so going past all these funny fake Tony Yeah, questions. Tony just submitted like six <laughs> questions. R- rattle off Tony's questions. Um, I like them. Why do you guys take up all the reservations at Sundara? <laughs> He's just pissy because he tried taking Christina there, but like didn't know you had to book three months in advance. Oh. Um, what's Kirby's batting average this year? You weren't as good this year, were you? Uh, I started the season really good. I had three doubles in the first game yeah. and then I had a couple off games. I walked more this year, got hit by a couple pitches. Answer the question. What was your batting average? Ooh, probably a bad year. Probably 350. Yeah. Man, I married used to be 400. No, I don't know. I, I almost hit 500 in a whole, for a whole year once. Okay. Uh, last ridiculous question. What shampoo do you use, Kirby? Um, I use a special shampoo for thinning hair. It's a Veda. Uh, it's from a Veda. Um, I forget what it's called. In body. But I think I think Tony's already passed the thinning. Yeah, hair he's back to the thin hair point. Okay, two more real questions. Okay, and then we're done. How do you? Break? I don't know that we are equipped to be answering these questions. How do you provide constructive criticism without fighting? No, oh. you don't. You don't provide constructive criticism to the queen. Um, one thing that I've noticed this week especially is. We have a um, we have an office manager who is heavily involved in mm. keeping things running smoothly. It's kind of a newer role that we have. Um, we have so many CAs now. We, we need six, someone. Six CAs, um, and she understands me deeply and yep. trusts that she can basically ask questions and stop me like almost like you would in a respectful way. Yeah. But like, and so that has really helped having two of you going like, uh, actually you're moving the target on the team. And I'm like, no, I'm not. And then you're both like, yeah, yeah. you are. And I'm like, oh, fuck off. <laughs> we had to remind you that the goals that we currently have had to be moved because you asked us to two months ago. And yeah. So, so no, that is, uh, I, I would, receive criticism actually decently well. I think <laughs> you're making a face as if I don't, I would say because I don't go, that's a bad idea. Mm, oh, I've, yeah. I've never gone like, uh, really? Yeah. I, that's not going to, I don't ever say that's not going to work. I don't say that's a bad idea or here's a better idea. Mm-hmm. I ask questions 
Mm-hmm. Um, I so which ask, validates that I've been heard. Yep. I ask, uh, and this is a big one that I like telling our team too, because like when you're in idea mode, you might ask a bunch of things, but you, they're already executing what you already asked. I go, what I was planning to work on was this. Does this take priority over that? So it reminds you of your previous good idea idea, and that that hasn't been executed yet. And we might need some time to like see the effect of one for the other. Mm-hmm. Um, and I don't, yeah, I, I don't know if we formally give criticism to each other. I'm just trying to think like, of like what you would criticize. I mean, you um, tried criticizing my morning routine. But it was by, and even that wasn't like, you're doing the nope. wrong thing. It's I've read or I've seen people talk about or have you tried right now? You're experiencing a lot of stress. I would love it if you tried this. It might help. Mm-hmm. Like, it's not like you're doing it wrong. You're a yeah. dummy. Yep. Um, as far as a lot of my criticisms tend to be in like wording or like aesthetics of stuff. So I've gotten um, I've learned to try and be less like wishy-washy. So like, I'll just, if you did an ad and I looked at it, I won't go like, mm, I don't like it. You know, so like. So goddamn frustrating. Right. So I have gotten very um, good at going like, I feel like that font is a little too blocky and I don't like how it transitions. It's really harsh. Um, and she, lo- you know, like, um, it is d- more difficult with verbiage because a lot of times you'll throw a draft out. Mm-hmm. Um, and sometimes I will just take a draft and I'll rework it. Or I might say, like, I feel like it is too soft and needs to be a little more direct. But again, it's still mm-hmm. giving you very, like, I would like to see more direct, like, we help this and less, like, it's possible we can, you yeah. know, like type of thing. Yeah. So very direct advice. But yeah. you've learned to not get emotional about it. Yeah, I used to be very precious about my art projects anytime I shoot a video <laughs> or, or do an ad. Mom doesn't like it. But, but I think that is the thing. We learned that. I'm we, a direct communicator. Yep. Yeah, and and with constructive. So like you got more you got more clear about what you wanted, and I got less precious about things because yeah, when it was like you know, I'd spend four hours on a minute long testimony and you'd be like, I don't like it. And it'd be like, what don't you like? <laughs> <laughs> this is perfect. Um, so again, offer each other, communicating, offering each other grace and learning and learning. Just And I think just always starting from, uh, it's about supporting the other person, about, achieving the goals that you've already agreed on Mm -hmm. and not getting your way. Like if you can achieve the goals and you don't get any credit or it's not exactly how you wanted, are you going to be okay with that? Because if you can't, if you answer that question, you go like, no, it has to be my way. Well, then, you know, you're just being an asshole and you need to settle down. Yeah. Yep. It's going back to trusting that you both are, heading the same direction Mm -hmm. and you both want the same thing more money i mean more people (laughs) i mean more impact sorry space there for a second quality family time (laughs) oh oh (laughs) happiness deep joy a connection (laughs) right we all want the same (laughs) things okay last question how do you find balance working together i'm an enneagram eight so eights are difficult. Mm-hmm. Eights are difficult humans. I have a lot of eight in me, um, but I am a three. Um, it it's kind of sums up all of the answers could come down to like, you learn your spouse. You learn yourself. Um, go back and listen to the Enneagram episodes. Like understanding, like it's part of why I'm obsessed with The Enneagram is because Mm -hmm. knowing what you are helps me work with you better. Mm -hmm. Knowing what I am helps me understand, like, you know, I can understand where I'm like, oh, okay, I'm really being a three right now. Like, okay, I can see that. And I can, you know, so like understanding the personalities 
is huge because I feel like it allows you to give so much grace yep. of like, he's not being lazy. He's procrastinating because he hasn't found inspiration yet. Mm -hmm. Like he's not doing it the way I would because he doesn't need this like type A framework before he moves forward or, you know, like. Yeah. And, and I think with that, there's, it doesn't, it obviously doesn't need to be just the Enneagram, but that key thing of understanding where your partner's coming from is really big and what their default mm -hmm. of, of how they come at things, because that clears up so many problems in communication when you go, oh, they just see the world this way. It's not that they see it exactly like I do and they're choosing to be mean to me. Right. It's that they, it's not <clears throat> that they don't think I know what I'm doing. It is a big thing that like, you know, I talk a lot about how chiropractors have more chips on our shoulder mm -hmm. than a Taco Bell. <laughs> like <laughs> Taco Bell doesn't even have chips. Um, you know, like the Dorito crunch wrap thing. Don't get sidetracked. Um, so like, Make sure first and foremost, if you're the chiropractor, that you don't, you're not carrying any ego into your relationship. Or if you're the finance and marketing degree and your spouse is the chiropractor, that you're not carrying ego in of like, just you don't even listen know, to me. like yeah. listen to my spreadsheet. <clears throat> um, so making sure that you're dropping that ego of like, I'm a real doctor. My opinion should just like matter. Yeah. And like, because that will just have no place for it. Well, and I would say on that point, having something that you, having a mechanism to check your ego and doing it often or to mm -hmm. have like a reflection. So whether that's a trusted friend who will tell you like it is and not just go, you know, yes, whatever you say, he's an idiot. You're right. Like having a good friend like that, having a therapist um, or having some kind of like journaling or prayer practice that challenges you to be honest in a way that you might not be able to in the moment. Because if all you're doing is having that argument and feeling more and more self-righteous and you don't sit down and have a journal go, what am I wrong about? And you have to think and do that. I don't know how many times arguments have been saved or never even happened because I was upset about a situation Then I read some stoic philosophy and have to like humble myself and then go, Jesus, I was building that up. Like I was building a storm that you might not have even known existed. And it was in me, not in the situation necessarily. Yeah, absolutely. Um, what was I going to say? I was going to say something about bond. Oh, uh, Something I, we, so we don't have good boundaries. We'll talk about that kind of in closing, but I do recommend in addition to knowing each other, knowing like really, really well, what is their stress default? How do they like criticism? How do they individually prefer that I present new ideas? Um, you know, knowing all that, but also do like set quality time where you guys can get past the big, like the day-to-day -day stuff. Mm -hmm. So like an annual retreat is really, really important where you can. And sit, tax deductible. And tax deductible. Sit and look and go like, okay, this is where, this is what we did last year. This is what our goals are for next year. Like goals for our family. Like in that should be like, are we working towards getting mom home more? Are we working on dad having more autonomy so he can start, you know, the photography hobby he wants? Or, you know, mm -hmm. like just you should have, if you're going to be co-life people, have that time where you almost approach your marriage in all of its aspects as spouses, as like the business is a branch. But, yep. you know, view it as a... That like, you know, like, OK, so since we do work together, how is this going to work with like parenting and this and all of that? And with that, you know, when you're talking about like reflecting, I would say another big thing is celebrating wins of it's very easy to constantly move on to the next problem and the next goal. And if you don't have that gratitude, 
it can wear down the business and your drive for business and your relationship of if it just always seems like you're facing problems together, there's something bonding in that. Mm -hmm. Um, But if you never come up for air and go, we, you know, hit 100 patients for the first time, we hit 200 patients for the first time, we hired our first, like, if you don't take a moment to celebrate those and go, look what we did, you just always feels like you're facing the next uphill. Mm -hmm. You need to turn around and look how high up you are already. Yeah. So, and I mean, a large part of, I'm surprised we haven't talked about this yet, but a large part of why it works, it, this works, even though we're being super... It's crazy. totally working. It's totally working, guys. We're fine. We're fine. We're fine. No. Um, is because we don't have you in unrealistic roles. We don't have you being our front desk CA. We don't yeah. have you... Like, and we not look, saying people couldn't have that. I'm just not the right personality no. for it. And I would not Yeah, it's not looking like at that. what is <laughs> your strengths and how can you support the business where you're going to be happy. Mm-hmm. Like, just because you have a need for a tech guy, if your guy or your girl don't like tech, <laughs> like, just yeah. because they're married to you doesn't mean, like, that that's the best role for them. And so, you know working together can work as long as it makes sense based on their strengths and yeah. what's in their wheelhouse. Yeah. Um, last, last thing. How would you answer if somebody said, how do you guys establish healthy boundaries around relationships, being parents and spouses and coworkers? Uh, we don't. I know. We, I mean, we kind of do like, is it okay? So I know how you would answer it. You would go, well, morning time is like morning time. We spend time together as spouses and then our kids wake up and then we're parents. And then I kiss them goodbye. And when I get to the office, now we're coworkers and all right, Clark, do you have that TPA report? And like, you know, like, but is anybody actually doing that? I find that... But I'm a workaholic, so that's where it's hard because I'm a three, and it's like, yeah, some people can go on vacation. We we do many things of, like, we do eat dinner as a family every night around a table with no phones and no Mm -hmm. TVs on. Like, we have our rituals with the girls where we are, I would say, from 5.30 to 7.30, we are quite present and we are very much a family. And that is, like, a very nice reset every day. Mm -hmm. Um... As far as like you and me, we have very porous boundaries of letting business come into other time. Usually what will stop it is we'll be solving a business problem and then you'll go, I'm sick of talking about this. And then we'll watch TV for the rest (laughs) of the night. Um, Yeah, business blurs across all things for us, but I think because we're both in it and it's both of our lives and we're pushing in the same direction so well Mm -hmm. that it hasn't caused problems. Like if you, if we had separate jobs and we went to dinner and all you did was complain about your business and I was just like, I, I can't help you. I don't know what to do. And you're ruining dinner. It would be a problem. But since it's like, where were we on that? Did you talk to that person? Okay. That's going to be handled. Well, I I just can't trust my ADHD to have clear boundaries. I'll be like, oh, it's dinner time. Don't don't bring it up. You know, it's like putting out fires at the moment. But I think. All right. So here's a spin on it. Like if so, a big trigger or indicator that would indicate (laughs) something that would indicate we were failing at this and needed clearer boundaries. So let's Mm. say. You know what? You can't talk about work before bed because you just get in fights and then it ruins Mm. time that's supposed to be like spouse time. Like, okay, we could either put a rule and be like, all right, no talking. But is that the root of the issue? Like if you have to make like so many like people when they come up with boundaries, I feel like it's very rigid timelines of when you're allowed Mm -hmm. to talk about a certain thing, when you're allowed to be coworkers. No, right now we're spouses. So love each other and kiss each other. Like, okay, that doesn't work in reality. So I feel like 
if you find yourself coming to like, we need to have these rules Ola, around when we're allowed to do this and when we're allowed to solve these things, you're not getting to the root of kind of the bigger issue of yeah. like, okay, why is all of this energy storing up throughout the day and needing to come out at night? Do, do you guys need to have a, like, a midday check-in more like mm. should we be going to lunch and like talking about you know like just yeah. really figuring out you know like no business talk at the at the table the dinner table well it's like well because that's not because it's a rule but because when else am I going to connect with my kids I'm like yeah. tell me about your day yeah. Like, and they're not running around. Like, no, you have to sit here and eat and tell me about your day. And like... Yeah, it's almost boundaries by like addition versus subtraction of like, I want quality time with our kids. It's not, I can't talk about business during this time. It's, that's the time that we get to spend the best time. Mm -hmm. So, so that's inserted. And I think it's more about um, not, it's about the boundaries of the person almost in the moment of like when you are just really tired about talking about something and I can tell you're exhausted. It's like, I don't want to force that's not comfortable or fun or productive mm -hmm. to go like, no, we need to solve this now. Um, and in the same way of if we have interpersonal stuff where you're frustrated or you don't like something and I have hurt feelings about it, like you don't want to hurt me. So that's like a boundary of, okay, I'll learn to communicate better as a business person because I don't want to hurt the person I love. Yeah. So it's more boundaries along like loving, respecting and wanting the best for each other versus like rigid business rules. Yep. Agree. There we go. We don't have to change anything. We're perfect. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I'm out of questions. We did good. Anything burning, any final takeaway? Hmm. I think so many issues are pre-resolved by having big, hard conversations up front about what the purpose of your marriage is, what the purpose of your business is, and how you support each other and coming from a place of how can I be better for them and not what they're not doing for me. If you have that attitude and you've had those big conversations I think so many things resolve themselves because you have a framework. Agreed. I love it. And just knowing that my ideas are the best and the most important. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> All right, she slayers. I hope that this episode was, um, I don't know, fun at least, even if it wasn't helpful. Uh, not, but now, you know, Kirby's batting average. Um, if you clicked on this because you're like, yeah, I want to know more. Um, uh, my very, very good friend, Christy Wick, just came out with an episode. She has a she is a powerhouse female chiropractor and her husband is not a chiropractor. He is awesome, though. Oh, uh, he's so Joe. great. We haven't we haven't seen him in a long time. Nope, I know it's because he said he didn't like you. And they have the coolest game room at their house. Yep. But it's like vintage video her, games. anyways, stop tangenting. <laughs> her podcast is called Illuminate Your Practice with Dr. Christy Wick. Um, and the episode is number 47. It's her most recent. By the time this comes out, it'll be her probably her second one, though. Um, from I Do to Biz Partners. And I have no doubt knowing how much uh, value that she gives that. I'm excited to listen to it because I saw it dropped. We're recording this on Friday and it dropped today or yesterday, yesterday but we had already had this one scheduled so i was just like ah and then i knew i was like don't listen to it because i don't want to like be in you know it's like comedians don't watch people that they're oh, susceptible yeah. to copying like i didn't want to like say the same yep. things or go down the same roads so. yeah so we'll listen to it now cool all right until next week she slayers bye bye <laughs>